Good afternoon. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you. Please take this time to silence your cell phones, and as you do, let us rise as we begin our celebration. Lift your hearts, lift your 
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Thank you. <laughs> we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. He's alive. Today, as we celebrate the Easter Sunday, the Easter joy, the resurrection and the new life of our Lord Jesus Christ. In a special way, we want to thank God for the gift of life, as well as pray for those that are not with us physically. We want to remember in a special way those the Lord had called, has called from us. And on this day, who would have been 60 years old, Saul Aguinaldo, joined that family in prayer, and all the families who are not with their dear ones this Easter. The hope of the new resurrection may give them joy and strengthen their faith as we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the anointed one of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are risen indeed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
let us pray. O oh God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant we pray that we will keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who drank and ate with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will, will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were then raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal Victim, offer your thankful praises. O Lamb, the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Speak, Mary, declaring, what you saw wayfaring, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels detesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. According to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. 
very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, when I say hallelujah, you say Christ is risen. Is that okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly. If anyone was asking, oh, what a Sunday. How come we have so many? Because Christ is risen. And I believe we have risen with him. We come to celebrate the Easter joy. Let's look back to last year. I don't know where you were on that Easter Sunday. I don't know what happened that Easter Sunday of 2020. You may not even remember anything at all, but you're right. Because we didn't celebrate Easter Sunday as we celebrate it today. We were, wherever we were, and maybe some of us on the screens trying to follow without even getting used to exactly what it means not to be at church on Easter Sunday, away from our families. But today is different. Today is wonderful. Here we are in thanksgiving, and we cannot take it for granted. Those who had... Um, an opportunity to rise very early in the morning can agree with me what a beautiful sunrise it was. You know, if you want to see the best of the sunrise, you got to sacrifice something. You got to sacrifice those last moments of your warm bed and get out. I had a chance to do that. It was beautiful. It was spectacular. It was amazing, sparkling. And the more the light came out, the more the beauty of the day that was received. And I came to the argument that it is true, this is Easter Sunday. We've been to church in the last week more than ever before, I think, in our lives this year. And there's, there is a reason for that. We were here a week ago when we had to celebrate Palm Sunday. And those of us who are here on Tuesday and Wednesday... And thereafter, we came on Holy Thursday. You remember? Then we had Good Friday. Then we had the Holy Vigil, the Nights of Nights. Then here we are celebrating Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. You can't forget where we've come from if you want to make meaning of where we are. Yeah, we can't forget it. Let's remember that we've gone through all those moments and the dark moments of the good, the Friday and the passion, the, uh, the crucifixion, the gruesome uh, sacrifice and the crucifixion of Jesus. Painful. Yes. We felt it. We went through it. It was closer to our hearts. When we remember the pain 
that this pandemic has caused and remember how the churches were locked and everyone locked up wherever they are they were very limited and can't go to many places we can't forget that we have to remember what it meant like to be in such a moment for the Easter joy to make sense we have to remember and walk through the journey of our redemption Something so wonderful for us to celebrate is that when they came where they had seen Jesus being buried, where they witnessed the crucifixion, the tomb where they had put him, they found that the stone had been rolled away. I'm so glad that we came this morning and we found that the churches are the stone has been oh thank you Lord you may take it for granted some could be here for the first time in a long time they've had to prepare themselves and pray and hope they can be there finally that is the true meaning of the resurrection and the new life that Jesus gives us if I call you dear my beloved the disciples of Christ would you, would you deny that? Would you? No. Just say yes, please. We are. That's who we are. We are disciples. Not because we are witnesses. Not because we were there. Those who were there as witnesses, they witnessed his suffering, his passion, his crucifixion, his death, and that's where it ended. When he was taken down from the cross, that's the last thing they have in their minds. It was terrible. Their hearts were downcast. They were beaten and shaken to the core. They had nowhere to go other than hide because their master had been taken away. They had to gather some strength. When something so terrible happens to you, it shakes you to the core. They were afraid. They ran for their lives. They knew the same thing could happen to them. But later, they found some strength to go back. The guilt in them for having denied their master was kicking in so hard. They want to find out where he was buried. And what did they find? What did they find? They, find? they found that the stone had been rolled. He wasn't there. The tomb was, the tomb was empty. You know, when we read the scriptures, sometimes we feel, I know the story. I know the end story. But can you imagine the first people to experience that empty tomb? Going to the grave of someone you buried a few days ago and you found that the tomb is empty. What do you do? It's scary. Fear. Shock. Disappointment. They came in fear and they, they were in awe. What happened? They were wondering. Who would they ask? What happened? They didn't see anything. They had no idea. They couldn't tell that part of the story. But at the same time, they were joyful. They're like, wow. He was tied up. He was buried. The big stone had been rolled, but he's not there. So there's that amount of excitement. They're like, okay, you know what? He, he did it. In their minds had to remember, what did he say to them? It took them time to believe, to know that, yeah, I get it now. He said he would rise again, and he did it. We notice that at that moment, when we think about exactly what happened, we, we can't put it in one word. The foundation of our faith and the core meaning of our faith is the account of what we read from the scriptures. All the gospel writers, can we go through them, the gospel writers? Help me out. The first one is saying, Matthew and her together. Matthew, the second is? Okay, some are not sure. If you're not sure, it's okay. Wait for those who are sure to say it. At least we have two more to go. We have Matthew, then we have? Uh -huh, I knew you would know that. Because this is St. Mark. Uh -huh, we have one more, three, two more to go. 
Luke, uh huh, thank you. And the last one? You guys are so good. You notice that each of these have at the center of their message the account of the resurrection. It is, it is unique in, in, in its own way, but they have the same account of the resurrection. And they all come to the agreement because the tomb was empty. There was no one there. The message from these two angels were there, go to Galilee, that's where you find him. When we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, it's not just words. This is the true nature of our faith, that this experience of Jesus' resurrection made a lot more sense. If Jesus had suffered and died, he wasn't the first one. But what changed the conversation, it was that he was able to come back to life again. He came back and no one had ever done that before. It is not seen before, and it's never seen before, but he was the first one and the last one. The rising sun coming up, coming up anew, giving a new life in the new day and the dawn of the disciples. The second reading has said, those who ate with him, those who drank with him, the account of those who were with him and the memory of those moments gives them a lot of joy that they were so close to him. They are so proud. Everyone in this world, as far as I believe, would always want to identify with successful people. No one wants to identify with failures. Is anyone? No one. We all always want to identify with successful people. We identify ourselves with wonderful people. Today we identify ourselves with Jesus because of what he gives and he renews in us. We no longer live by our, for ourselves, but we live for C-H Christ, you got it. Christ who lives in, in us. Just look around. We are as human as anything. Weak as anything. Sinful as anything. We might deny it, but it's okay, but that's true. But what makes the difference in our lives, in our failures, in our darkness, in the coldness of our lives, in the tomb of our lives, is that Christ lives within us. Easter gives us an opportunity to look back, not into the pain, but to look back with the joy of having overcome that pain. To look back in the past to have overcome every challenge. And we joyfully can say, Ale. Alleluia. Alleluia is when you know there was a challenge way ahead of you. But because you are courageous enough and with your faith, now you look back to it as history. Alleluia means that when we go back to our homes and in our families, we begin anew. We have an opportunity to open a new page of our lives. We have an opportunity to, to reconcile. It may take a long time, but the process at least can begin. Hallelujah means that when we go back into our lives, we notice where we failed, but even then, Christ has been so kind to us. Hallelujah means that when we've been broken, we've been resilient enough to overcome our brokenness because it defines our human nature, but as well as Christ adds that value in our lives. Hallelujah means that I can get out of bed Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can get out of bed. Some may never come out. Hallelujah means that I can get into the car. Wow, yes. And I can drive and go to church. Hallelujah means that I can wake up every Sunday and go to... Oh, but how come the voices are so, not many? I, I want to be sure that... That's what it is. And true. Hallelujah means that, yes, I can go in thanksgiving because this resurrection is what we celebrate every Sunday, for heaven's sake. I remember when we were young. I'm so glad when I see the little kids coming into church with their parents. 
I can imagine the process. These children have been instructed at home. We are going to church. In the church, you got to behave. You got to listen to the priests. Uh huh. Even when it doesn't make sense to you. <laughs> Uh, of course, sometimes you appear to the kids, Father, can I ask a question? No, they can't. Sometimes they, they don't get it. But the good thing is that the parents get it. Mm-hmm. They do. So they have to go through that process of lining them up properly, dressing them up, and, oh, that's a lot of work. But it's worth it. We had to go through that. I remember that every Sunday for us was the best day of the week. We had special clothes for Sunday, special shoes for Sunday that would never go to school. We, we had a, a special mat because we sat on the floor, you know, and that was for Sunday. And tell, ask me, what happens when we go to church? Every time we went to church, we were like almost motionless. It was very tense. But I think when I remember, it was really good. Sometimes we need that attention and that discipline when we are young because it grows with us. Imagine if you, you know, your parents just told you, you don't worry, my child, just do anything. Just do anything, don't worry. You can put your shoes in the air, put your feet in the air, step on the tables. That's not a good parent. So they had to get us through all that because they were preparing us. And Sunday, well, there was always a reward of a good meal. There was a good meal after Sunday. And it was wonderful that when we had that meal, yes, we say, yeah. If they ask me to stay quiet in church, I would do that because I know it's rewarding. And I know some parents could do that. So that we have not done us, but I mean, that was one of the things that kids always knew they were done us. The reward and the hope of something good makes and gives meaning to our lives. You just can't live life anyhow. You have to, you've got to have a goal, you know? Of course, if you ask me now, what makes so special a Sunday for you? It's not the meal. Sometimes I don't even have time to eat as much, you know? There's now something way higher, something way greater, because we gather as a community and celebrate our faith, you know? We gather and celebrate our faith. The faith that we love so much that we can even pass it on. When your children ask you, Dad, Mom, why do you have to go on Sunday to church? Just tell them Christ is risen. Will you forget that? Yeah, it's true. Plain as it is. We go to Sunday because Christ is risen. We go to Sunday because we are alive. We go to Sunday because that is our nature and that is our faith. When faith becomes your nature, your nature becomes faith. The disciples were human as they were. They were afraid. They denied Jesus. That was their nature, and it's okay. But later, their nature turned into faith, and faith turned into their nature. That's why all the saints we know, all the apostles, St. Paul himself, no one witnessed the resurrection. No one. But what they proclaim and what they witnessed, even dying for it, because they believed that Christ was risen. Christ is risen in each one of us. We have to allow ourselves to be inbuilt into the risen Lord in our way of life from now on forward. You know what, where you are? You know what a kind of life you've been into. Now set yourself a goal. Give yourself a road map. What happens after this? So what? It's risen. So what? What next? Oh, after here we go for breakfast. No, it's more than breakfast. It's more than going for lunch. It's more than having a good dinner. There's something way greater that you have a whole life and an opportunity to be a disciple of Christ. You have a whole opportunity to live up to why Christ died for you and me. St. John Paul and St. Augustine say these words, We are an Easter people, 
and Alleluia is our song. So if you find the children singing today, wherever they are in the bath, Alleluia, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. You may not know the words, but hum it. Say it. Share it. Because he is, uh huh, and he is alive. Amen. Shall we now rise, please? My brothers and sisters, through baptism, we have been buried with Christ so that we may rise with him to a new life. On this Easter morning, gathered as one community, united through the living waters of baptism, let us renew the promises that were made at our own baptism. And so I ask you, do reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? God of all powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May we remain faithful to our promises and to our risen Lord and Savior forever and ever.
Father, we come before you with these, our prayers and our needs. For Pope Francis, along with our bishops and pastors, that they will lead the church in Easter joy throughout the world, that even in our times of sin and disappointment, the new life of the risen Lord may be our source of comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all entrusted with leading the world's nations, that they will promote peace and that they will reign in the minds and hearts of all the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate Easter amid suffering, in the midst of war, in hospital rooms and nursing homes, in prison cells, and in the prison of addiction and mental illness, that they will experience the peace of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those without food or shelter or someone to care for them in their infirmity. For those who celebrate Easter, hoping for a better world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and confirmed, Courtney, Lily, and Francis, that throughout the coming 50 days of Easter, they will rejoice in the newness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those who are dear to us, those in our parish and in our parish book of intercessions, that they will know the healing power of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those we remember this weekend, and for all our loved ones, that they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life in the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. O God of wonder, your people call out to you. Hear our prayers and strengthen our Easter faith. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered died and rose from the dead, and is Christ who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer this sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to right and just our duty in our salvation at all times to acclaim your Lord, but on this day above all to Lord yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together with the unending hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, make graciously holy these gifts we brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his one rest, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, Saint Mark, our patron saint, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants, Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also the order of bishop and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the whole world to our departed brothers and sisters, especially those we pray for in this Mass and soul. And to all we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of dimittance your kingdom, where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank you for being here as we celebrate uh, the Easter joy. And I would like to thank you for your generosity that you've always supported our church, especially now that we don't have the baskets going around, but we, we make sure we go online, sign up, and, offer, and do our offering online. Thank you very much. And those who haven't, please, I encourage you to go right there. We've had to work through so many different things, but it's because of your generosity that we can work around everything to make sure that we are continuing to be sustained and with a goal that we continue to be sustained even when challenges might come because of your generosity. So sign up online and wherever you can and you, you need to any explanation, you can always call our office. Thank you for those who are praying with us remotely at their homes uh, right now and those who are with us in the Great Hall, which is our church provision for the extra numbers and for accepting, you know, it is easy for us to have come through all that, but where we were, where you can sit where you want and enjoy your company as much. So we have had to change and shift, which I'm so glad that we, you, are, you adapt accordingly. So thank you very much. That should not be a reason that whoever is in here is much better than whoever is down there. No. So you, you, there's no ticket, you know, there's no buying tickets, you know. And I'll ask that you continue to, to, be, uh, to be kind to our ushers. Thank you to, thanks to our ushers, our ministers at the door, welcoming us, signing us up. The patience it takes and the efforts it takes is because of your responses. Thank you very much. And even as we get out. Okay. <laughs> yes, oh, and I want to thank in a special way the team that has been hopping out and always here, the decorations and uh, the cleaning up, the sanitizing and all those extra things that have to be done. I thank them very much. And of course, our music uh, ministry and liturgists who have been carrying us through. When you see the priest is here, the music is here. And that, w that means it takes a lot of effort. So I'm very grateful to all of you. And I imagine today we have children who are coming to celebrate their first Easter, isn't it? If there are any babies who are having their first Easter, will you please come forward? I know the babies can't come on their own. Parents, <laughs> if you know you have a new baby and it's their first Easter, please bring them forward. You can't bring them this far to church and you don't bring them here. <laughs> Just get them out. I mean, wake them up. Christ is risen. You'll, you'll explain to them in the future. So I would like to congratulate you, dear parents. And uh, these are children celebrating their first Easter. They have no idea, but you'll explain to them. The new life that God has given your family is the joy of the church. We ask that God continues to bless them. God our Father, these new children and the babies in our midst are reminders of the life and the joy of the new resurrection of the church. We ask you to bless their parents as well as these children as they grow in your grace. Amen. Amen. Right, you ready? <laughs> you know, and they love it, they don't even cry. All right, thank you. thank you. I also like to thank our deacons, Deacon Mike and Deacon John. Let us now pray for God's blessing and you ask you to bow your heads and every after the invocation, your response will be amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion.